Welcome to Awakening You channel. If you appreciate what we do, please support us. Thank you. I'm Sananda. I have noticed that many people were quite moved by my last message. For me this is great. If I had said all that and you remained impassive or simply nothing had reached you, then I would be worried, because my words would not be echoing. I can assure each of you that increasingly, you will be more intrigued by what I will say here. These are profound teachings that destroy everything that you are used to doing, and that today, I am trying to show you that this is not how you do it. However, I want to make it very clear here each of you has free will, change whoever wants, it changes those who have an open heart and a strong desire to reach the fifth dimension. I'm not forcing anyone to do anything, each one will follow, each one will listen with their heart. If you listen to what I'm saying with your mind, there will be revolt, there will be discontent, there will be all kinds of complaints and judgments, and that was not my purpose. Now whoever listens with their heart will then absorb what is being said, and simply think about it and try to take a new path. There is no point here commenting, remembering, judging what has already been done. Did you know what was correct? No, they didn't know. So why the trial? So today the theme will be exactly that, judgment. Why do you judge so much? Why do you like to judge others, judge yourself? Those who are judges by profession must do so, but within the laws and events inherent to each case. Judgment is an extremely negative process, because every time you point the finger, I'm not speaking here literally, you are marking the other. It's as if you, that other person, was that target that you train, so that the arrow hits the center. So you look at each other, turn him into that target and shoot the arrow. This is the trial. Because the judgment hurts that brother, and makes you the actor of an action, of hurting him. But how can I hurt him? For this reason, you are sitting behind a table, in a strange outfit, with a hammer in your hand, giving the verdict of your trial to that person. But where are the defense lawyers? Where are the prosecuting lawyers? Where is the jury? No, you take on all the roles, you are powerful. You at the same time defend, at the same time condemn, at the same time give the sentence and at the same time expose it. You take on all these roles and, in the end, you release that arrow that hits the target. So don't think that when you judge others, nothing happens to them, that you just expressed your opinion. Your opinion, in this case, is imbued with a feeling, which is judgment. And it is an extremely negative feeling. But why are you used to doing this? Because one day, someone said that God the Father or Mother judged, that Father or Mother God stood behind a table doing exactly that, you're going to heaven. You're going to hell. So you also feel entitled to do the same. So let's start here and get things right. God does not judge anyone. No one goes to heaven and no one goes to hell, because this doesn't exist. You reap what you sow only that. If you sow good feelings, good actions, that's what you will reap. Otherwise, you will reap exactly what you sowed. So you are planting a judgment. What is this doing? Throwing your entire point of view on top of that other. Then I ask him, do you know how that other person lives? Do you know what he feels? Do you know what his soul is? Do you know why he's going through that? The answer is no, to all these questions. Why not? Because you are not him, you are not in his consciousness, you are not in his soul walk, you are not living his life. So how to judge it, how to point the finger, point the arrow and shoot at that target, for something you don't know? What power do you give yourself to do all this? So what you do when you take on all these roles, and become an extremely powerful human being, is plant that. It's planting this feeling of not understanding your brother, of simply accusing him. Because when you judge and you don't actually know what he is thinking, living, 
you are accusing him. So you stopped being an impartial judge, you assumed a single role, prosecutor, he who only condemns, never defends. The other roles, you threw away, you took on the role of judge, but in reality you are the prosecutor. You are condemning him. With what right? Not even those who dress up as judges in real life have this right. They can have this right, within a real court where there are all these figures, defense lawyer, prosecutor, judges, and jury. So yes, everything is in balance. But you are very important, you are powerful, so you take on all the roles, no, no, you assume the only role, that of prosecutor. Then I ask again, by what right, who gave you this right, who said to you, you can judge. And let's suppose, let's suppose, that father or mother God judged. Are you equating yourself with him, do you want to have the same power as father or mother God? So I tell you, there is another wrong feeling. So, correcting, God the father or mother does not judge, father or mother God is pure love. There is no judgment. The consequences for everything you do are part of each person's journey, it is not a punishment imposed by God, after a possible judgment. So think about it. Why judge others? And then you put everything in this judgment. You say, way of dressing, way of living, way of being, sexual orientation, work, friends, everything. You end up judging a whole range of options. But who lives his own life? Oh, it's him, not you. So I can only tell you the following, that arrow you launched at that brother does hurt him, yes. This does not go unpunished before him, it is not something you say or do and is forgotten by the universe. No, it's not. That judgment hits him, that arrow you launched at the target penetrates him, and somehow he will feel your judgment. He will know that you judged him. Maybe not explicitly, but you will know, and you will be very sad about it, because you will ask yourself, why is he judging me? It's my life. Exactly, it's his life, you don't have the right to judge, you don't have the right to criticize, you don't have the right to discriminate, anything or anyone. So now I go to the other side of the coin. When you judge yourselves. Ah because I am this, I am that. I must say to each one of you, that every time you judge yourself, it is the same thing. Only you make a special arrow, in which the target is yourself. It's like a boomerang that you throw and it comes back at you. And that feeling of judgment, which you emanated to the universe, planted, it comes back. And increasingly, you will live what you judged yourself to be. Because you will reap what you sow is it worth judging yourself? If you did something wrong, and today you realize that you did it, congratulations to you who realized that you did something wrong. So be grateful. Today, I am grateful to have realized my mistake. You made a mistake, yes, you made a mistake. Will you go back in time and undo the mistake? Will not. What will happen and that you will assume all the consequences of your mistake, this is enough. And you being grateful for understanding that that was a mistake, wow. This is splendid because you evolve. And from now on, he will try not to make mistakes again, don't make the same mistake. So why stay, ah, because I did that, because I did that. You will only be making the same mistake you made before. And the very walk will bring you back to the same error situation, because you are planting it again. So why judge, whether it be someone else or just like that? Nobody has to judge anyone, you don't have this power, you are not these powerful beings who take on all this. Not even God does that, how do you want to do it? Because the trial, as I said a moment ago, encompasses a lot of other things. Through judgment, you criticize, you discriminate, you humiliate, you literally point the finger, you are sarcastic. It's not just the feeling of judgment, 
you can add many things to it. Anger, because you often judge in anger. You can be violent, through judgment. Ah, that criminal deserves to die. In other words, you judged and your desire at that moment is to kill him, because he deserves to die. Who said that? Why does he deserve to die? It is your judgment, this is not written anywhere. Father or mother God is pure love, he never said you could kill a brother, this was distorted by your religions, this is not the way today. So I want you to stay here today, with this thought, why judge? It doesn't matter who. Whether it's you, whether it's someone else, it doesn't matter. If you go through many situations that you don't understand, you didn't just plant in this life, you have been planting over time. And now the harvests are accelerated, very accelerated, because you have to learn the lessons. So a lot of the things you are doing today, you will be able to harvest at the end of the day, because everything is very fast-paced. And what you have done in other lives, rest assured, is now falling again, so that you can get rid of these feelings. So why judge yourself? You are gods, are you perfect? And even if it were, even if you were a god, perfect, immaculate, you wouldn't judge. Then you wouldn't be god, because when you have unconditional love in your heart, you don't judge, you don't criticize, you don't discriminate, you don't live the life of others, you don't get angry at them, you don't judge them so that they die. Learn, no one is a judge. So why judge? Everyone lives their own life. You really like to observe, envy, comment on each other's lives. Why don't you take care of yours? Is yours so monotonous, so empty, so futile, that you need to comment on someone else's life? Or are you trying to cover up your own mistakes, take attention away from you? So you pay attention to the other person. Take care of your life, take care of your walk, take care of your spiritual elevation. Forget the other one. If each of you lived your own life, you have no idea what this world would transform into. But you always want to live each other's lives. So first step, today we are talking about judgment here. Eliminate this from your life, eliminate it. When you criticize someone, you are judging. When you comment on someone, you are judging. When you are angry with someone for something, you are judging. When you discriminate against someone, you are judging them. Then realize how powerful this action of judgment is. So if you stop all these attitudes and habits, you stop judging. And don't forget to stop judging yourself, because you are only increasing, exactly, everything you did wrong in the past. You will bring more of the same. So realize, that when you hit another with that arrow of judgment, everything you judged against him, you just planted, that is, somehow, that criticism, that judgment, that discrimination, that anger will come back against you. Only you wait for the harvest. Nothing goes unpunished. You think you are very powerful and nothing you do has a return, it is forgotten by the universe. No, it's not. It is the law of action and reaction, cause and effect. So think about it, what do you want to harvest up front? Do you want to reap the results of your own mistakes or do you want to reap the results of your own mistakes and everything you judged, in relation to others as well? You like to suffer, is that it? But this is another subject. Think about it. Ask yourself this question, based on everything I said here today. How much am I judging?